over the last few months, there seems to be an ever increasing number of news articles, blogs, reddits, and developers complaining that it's harder to find a programming job in 2024 and the market is oversaturated. Now, a lot of the data I've seen has been focused on the US. So I thought I would create a video about the UK job market for programmers in 2024. Watch this video to learn if the market is good or bad. The first place that I went to try and prove this thesis was the Office for National Statistics website. Now, if you haven't come across this site before, this is the official government website where they put all their job data and every so often they do this labor market overview. So we've got the March 2024 edition and the summary for this report are things are looking OK. So this year we can see that the paid employees have risen about 15,000 jobs. Uh, last year it rose 1.3 percent and if we look to the future the estimate is that it's going to grow another 1.2 percent until 2025. now if we look at all the other different data points like the employment rate this goes back to 1970. And i think from this graph it's probably fair to say that the average uh, employment rate within the uk is about 75 percent if we look at the november january one you'll be able to see that there's nothing to be worried about here and aside from the employment rate, this positive theme can be seen in all the redundancy reports as well. So we've got the redundancy rate in the UK. You can see here that you know, on average, we're probably a little bit better than we are normally. However, there has been a slight spike in the last few months. Again, if we look at the redundancy levels over here, we can see that again, we're probably in a slightly better position than we have been since 1995. Now, if we just took the average UK job data, I think it would be fair to assume that tech is probably doing okay. However, this really doesn't answer why articles like The Guardian, Big Tech Boom or Bust here, are saying that there's been 7,500 job layoffs and that happened within a single month within technology. So obviously we can't just rely on the UK's economy job data to answer this question. Instead, let's look at the jobs being advertised and see if that looks positive or negative. Now, within the UK, the best source of information to get real time job market trends is this website called itjobswatch.co.uk. Now, the first thing that I want to focus on here is a pretty, really depressing trend is if we look at this permanent tab and if we focus on this median salary year on year change, what can you notice? So, yep, I'm scrolling down every single different type of tech skill here and there's an overwhelming red coming back at me. Now, another interesting thing to probably point out now is that this trend isn't just impacting permanent roles. If I click on this contracting tab and we focus on this median year on year change column again, you can see it's complete red dead redemption here, regardless of your skill as well. So I think it's fair to say there's definitely a negative trend in salary. And typically this normally comes about when there's less jobs being advertised. So now let's quickly check the four most popular programming languages and see if there's actually less jobs compared to this time last year. OK, so according to IT Job Watch, the four most popular programming languages at the moment are Python at number one, C Sharp at number two, JavaScript at number three, and then Java at number four. Now, if we look at Python jobs being advertised in 2022, we can see that there was 23,000 jobs uh, within 2023, 17,000 jobs. And this season, it's 8,000 jobs. So I'm not sure if this is the full period. However, we can definitely see a downward trend. Now, if we look at C Sharp, again, we can see the same trend. So 16,000 jobs, 10,000 jobs, 7,000 jobs. If we look at JavaScript, 24, 13, 7 and a half. That is a big drop. If we look at Java, again, 9, 6, 2. So I think that data is pretty clear. That there's definitely less roles being advertised in 2024. Now, when it comes to actually finding a new position, the number of advertised jobs is only one part of the equation. The other bit is how many people are applying for those jobs. And this is where things like redundancies or people swapping their jobs can have an impact. Now, one source of information we can look at for redundancy information is layoffs.fyi. And this site has a combination of worldwide tech layoffs. Now, if I'm honest, it is mainly focused on the US. However, there's some UK stuff and some European stuff here as well. Now, if we just look at the overall layoff chart here, 
we can see that you know as of june 2022 to pretty much feb 2023 it was a pretty much a bloodbath of people getting it made redundant now if we look to the 2024 data things are actually still fairly bad and if we compare this to say pre-covid pre-pandemic levels we'll see that you know right before covid the job market was pretty good for tech workers and ever since q2 2022 actually you know, things aren't as bad as they were however they've nowhere near gone down to normal levels again now before we jump to any conclusions one thing that i want to talk about are bubbles now on the screen you can see the historic stock price for meta for the last couple of years and you can see here that pre-pandemic things were going good we hit the pandemic things bottomed out and then we're going back to normal now if you look at the meta stock price and you take it from october here you can see their stock price was something like 1900 bucks and if you just looked at the data from here you'll say that meta their stock has just constantly been going up now the reason why i just showed you that metadata wasn't for you to go out and buy a stock it's just to highlight how something like covid can really impact how you interpret data because if we just looked at meta from october things would look like it's on this drastic up However, if you looked at Meta over three or four years, you could see this steady growth. And exactly the same things happen when we're looking at the data from IT Job Watch. So just looking at the data that could impact the number of roles being advertised, if we jump over to statista.com and we can see this job to job move, then typically, you know, I'll probably say that we've got this 2.25% job move. Uh, if we look from COVID levels when we had IR35 and everything like that, you can see we've had this massive spike again it was kind of going up in 2022 so this would be a reason why there's much more jobs being advertised compared to pre-pandemic levels now for me personally that data doesn't shock me at all because on a very consistent basis i'm still finding articles about the great resignation rolling on if we look at this one by michael page we can see that 43 percent of employed people surveyed said that they were somewhat likely or extremely likely to consider changing jobs and it's very easy to find stuff around quark quitting and people not being happy in their workplace now in terms of evaluating the job market i think this is a really interesting thing to consider because if we just look at it job watch then it probably looks like in the last few years there's more it jobs being advertised than ever before however when you take into account ir35 the great resignation and all that nonsense actually what's happening are the same roles are being re-advertised more often so actually it might look like everything's brilliant however as we've seen it's a downward trend the final question i wanted to quickly answer here because i get asked it all the time is is contracting any good within the uk in 2024 so again taking our python java javascript and c shaft our baseline I quickly jumped over to jobsite.co.uk and if you look at the ratios here so a thousand permanent to 98 contract for python we've got a thousand permanent roles to 64 for javascript we've got 800 permanent roles to 40 contracting for c sharp and in java we've got 600 positions compared to 73 contracts now if you are considering contracting within the uk you should also take into account out of those roles how many are inside ir35 and how many are outside ir35 i don't have time to go into this topic in detail here but basically you want outside ir35 roles because they're better with tax which means you'll make more money overall now getting exact job data here is a bit difficult however there's one study done by tudos which is actually pretty interesting so i thought i'd add it here so based on the people that they studied they found that 80% of contractors could find outside IR35 work in 2022, and this dropped down to 75% in 2023. However, for me, I think this is fairly surprising. I thought this would have been much lower. Now, if we just looked at the people they asked, 30% of the contractors felt confident that they could find IR35 work, which again is really good. Now, I won't go through everything down here, but you can see you know, businesses are feeling confident. Um, and only about 30% of the people who are contractors now are actually unsure if they're going to carry on being contractors. And basically, you know, the reason for this is uh, basically contracting is not as attractive as it used to be. However, that still means that 70% of the contractors are still happy with it. 
And for me, this is a good sign that contracting is definitely something to consider. So to answer the original question, is it harder to find a job in 2024 if you're a programmer? The sad answer is yes, it is. And as we've seen, it doesn't make a difference if you're permanent or you're looking for a contracting role. It doesn't make a difference of what programming language you're interested in. Above the board, everything is a little bit more bleaker than it was six to 12 months ago. Now, bear in mind, this doesn't mean that you won't find a new job. After all, you only need one. However, just to set your expectation, the job hunt might take you a little bit longer and the salary that the company might offer you, it will be a little bit less probably compared to how it was six to 12 months ago. Now, if this sort of video is your thing, show me some love by clicking on like. Also, if you don't want to miss out on other programming related stuff, smash subscribe right now because my name is John and I release a video every single Sunday aimed at making people more informed and better developers. And the final thing I've got to say is that if you're interested in learning which programming language pays the most amount of money in 2024, then on the screen right now is a video I recorded which will answer that question. So click on that, it's a banger. Otherwise, until next Sunday, happy coding.